Hi. In this lesson, I'll teach you a very simple way to understand how all scales that are well suited for building up harmonies are ordered and related to each other. We'll end up systemizing 33 scales in total. First, we'll have the theory section, learning the very big picture and how all scales can be so very nicely ordered. Then we try out the scales in practice and we learn when to use each scale. And maybe we'll end up playing something like this. Rather crazy scale progression. My name is Oliver Preen, by the way, and this is a new jazz lesson. So, here we have the major scale. This case in C. Let's make a circle above and add the major scale to that circle. And then we mark up each scale note on the circle like this. First note, second note, third note, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh note. Now all scales in this world can be grouped into families. So the first family I'll introduce to you is family one, also called the major modes. The single scale members of this family are derived by playing our major scale in different degrees. So here we have the second degree scale. Third degree scale, fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree, and the seventh degree scale. So the major scale contains seven notes. And by using each of the seven notes as separate starting points, we can create seven different family members, right? Now, look at the interval steps on our major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and a half step. On our circle, we have written down the interval steps. So, all the scale members of a family have the same circular interval pattern, right? The individual scales just have different starting points on that pattern. Now, Let's write down the interval steps of each scale. Now, let's move on to family two. Before we used the major scale as basis. Now we'll use the ascending melodic minor scale. This scale also contains seven notes. And the interval steps are whole step, half step, whole, 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 and a half step. Now, once more, we can make seven degrees, seven different family members. So, here we have the second degree. 
third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree, and seventh degree. Again, all these seven scales belong to the same family because they all have a specific starting point on the same circular interval pattern. Let's write down the interval steps of each scale. Now, let's proceed to family 3. Let's do another type of scale with a different interval pattern than the other two families. This is the harmonic minor scale. The interval pattern contains this exotic uh, one and a half step. Now, let's locate our family members. Second degree, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, sixth degree, and the seventh degree. Let's write down the interval steps of each scale. So, already now we have three families, each containing seven members. That's 21 different scales in total. Each scale is defined by 1. The family and its circular interval pattern and 2. The starting point on that pattern, right? Now, let's move on to family 4. This is the harmonic major scale. This scale contains a brand new interval pattern. So, with this scale as basis, we can derive the, the second degree, third degree, fourth, fifth, sixth, and finally the seventh degree. Let's write down the interval steps of each scale. Now, what we are about to do in this lesson is to make a very well-defined set of families and scales that all comply to some very simple rules that make sure that each of our scales are well suited for building up straightforward harmonies or chords. But more about the rules and the chords later on when we are going to try out the scales in practice. For now we still need to add three very small families. So. Let's move on to family 5. Here we got the diminished scale. An 8 note scale when framed by an octave. But look, the scale actually has a repeating interval pattern on only every second note. So let's only make two markers on our family 5 circle. Look, we have whole step, half step, and then we simply just repeat that interval pattern. Whole, half, whole, half, and again whole, half. So with this whole, half 
repeating pattern of our scale, we got only one other family member. The second degree inverted diminished scale. That starts up with a half step instead of a whole step. Let's write down the interval steps of the two scales. Family 6 is very special and contains only one member. Now, this is the whole tone scale. A six note scale when framed by the octave. But this scale has a repeating interval pattern for only every one step. Look, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and again, whole step. Only whole steps. So we got the same interval pattern, the same scale, the whole tone scale, no matter the degree. Look, this is a whole tone scale. This is also a whole tone scale. And this is a whole tone scale, and so on. So, family six has only one member. Let's write this down. And finally, we got family seven. This is the augmented scale. A six note scale when framed by the octave. But like the diminished scale, it has a repeating interval pattern for every second note. Whole and a half, half. Whole and a half, half. Whole and a half, half. And then we got this very rare second degree family member starting up with a half step. Let's write down the interval steps of the two scales. Now, the thing is that we can just keep on inventing new families of scales. Therefore, I have made up a very well-defined field of study that limits our total number of scales and that makes sure that our scales are well suited for building up straightforward harmonies. So, our families must comply with a small set of rules that I made up. Rule number one. The interval pattern may only contain half, whole, and whole and a half steps. Rule number two. Half steps cannot be neighbors. Rule number three. Whole and whole and a half steps cannot be neighbors. And finally, rule number four. Whole and a half steps cannot be neighbors. And by the way, Let's also make a rule number zero. This rule may seem obvious, but it isn't really. The scale must be frameable by an octave. So when hitting the octave, the scale must start over and repeat itself. In another new jazz lesson, we learn to improvise in a very modern, free jazz style, and we actually play scales that go beyond the octave. <laughs> I'll paste a link to that lesson below. Now, if we comply with these simple rules, the result is our seven families above, containing in total 33 scales. No less, no more. The idea is that all these scales are all well suited for building up straightforward harmonies. And that's just the thing we need now, because we are going to get practical improvising over some chords. Now, look at the major scale. On what seventh chord can we use this scale? Well, we simply just pick out every second note and we got the C major 7th chord. We can do that approximately on every scale above. So 
Let's write down the seventh chords that fit each scale. Almost every scale got only one chord attached. We have a few exceptions where enharmonic chord interpretations are possible, and therefore these scales have two options. But we never go crazy with a whole bunch of enharmonic chord interpretations. So isn't this just great? Because of our few simple rules, we obtain a pretty good behavior of the scales when building up comprehensible seventh chords. So, now we know what scales we can use when improvising over different types of seventh chords. So, let's do a chord progression. In the previous lesson, we improvised over the 2-5-1 chord progression in major. So, why not try out the 2-5-1 in minor this time? So, what scales can we play on top of this progression? Well, on the minor 7 flat 5 chord, we can do these scales. On the 7 chord, we can play these scales. And on the minor major 7, we have these options. So, let's try out some of them. What about um, D Locrian with a raised 6th step, to G Phrygian dominant, to C harmonic minor? Or what about D altered to G Aeolian dominant to C melodic minor. Oh, what about this crazy one? D half diminished to G Lydian dominant, to C Lydian flat 3. Okay, if you want to support my work with a small amount, you are so much welcome. And thank you so much to everybody who has donated so far. You make my dream come true. I can cut down the working days as a bus driver and in return make free and public music lessons on the New Jazz YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And thanks a million for all the wonderful comments and likes. I have such a great moral support in all of you. If you want to help me out, you can also translate the English subtitles. All my lessons are open for translation and corrections. With translated captions, my videos reach out to a much broader audience. So. Thanks a lot to all of you who have contributed with the translation work. I'm just so grateful. Okay, are you still here? <laughs> Great. Then I'll present to you this fantastic and very smart and handy tool made by Nupfe, a subscriber and patron. On this cardboard tool, you can look up all the members of the first four families in every tonality. Look, we have the circle of major modes, harmonic major, harmonic minor, 
and melodic minor modes. Now this is very smart. Just turn the inner wheel, the inner wheel to pick a tonality. So if we, for example, want to look up uh, the Mixolydian scale in uh, C, we locate uh, Mixo and turn the inner wheel to C. And then we got all the notes pointed out by the other family uh, members, uh, the other members of the circular family. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B flat. Now that's cool, right? In another lesson, we study this tool much more thoroughly. I'll paste a link to uh, the lesson below, and I'll also paste a link to a PDF so you can print, cut, and assemble this tool yourself. I, I'll uh, also paste a link to uh, just a simple list containing all the scales from this lesson. Well, that's it for now. See you in about four weeks. The best and warm regards from Oliver.